Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. Welcome to my video series, Learn Lightroom CC, also known as Lightroom in the Cloud. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the local adjustment tools that are found in Lightroom CC. We're going to work on this image, and I already did do some adjustments to this image already. I did add one of my own custom profiles to this image. I call it Sunrise. Then I did some light adjustments, highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. I added contrast to the image with the point curve. And then all I did was lens corrections. Other than that, I didn't do anything else to the image. Now, all the adjustments that I did do so far are called global adjustments. They're called global because they affect every single pixel on the image. There are times, though, when we want to adjust just part of the image. Well, Lightroom has three tools that allow you to adjust just part of the image, and they're called local adjustment tools, and they are the linear gradient, the radial gradient, and the brush tool. And we're going to start out with the brush tool. They're over here on the right-hand tool well, and you can see the Right here is the brush tool. Directly below that is the linear gradient, and below that is the radial gradient. Now, some little tricks I'm going to give you on how to use these tools as well as just basic operation. Obviously, with the brush tool, you're going to brush an effect in. You're going to brush some type of adjustment somewhere on your image. Now, you work with a brush. You could affect some attributes of the brush. First, the size of the brush. There's a number of different ways you could change the size. The obvious way is with this slider. Just move it to the right to make it larger. Left makes it smaller. You could use the bracket keys on your keyboard. The left bracket key makes the brush smaller. Right bracket key larger. If your mouse is equipped with a center wheel, or if you're using an Apple Magic Mouse, you could adjust the brush size with that wheel or with the Magic Mouse by simply dragging your finger across the Magic Mouse or spinning the wheel on your mouse and you'll affect the size of the brush that way. Now there's some more attributes to this brush but they're hidden. If you look over here to the right where it says size there's a little expose triangle. If we click on that you'll see that there's feathering. So if do you want the brush to be very hard with a distinct edge or do you want it feathered? And you have that slider for that. Then there's flow and density and a lot of people are confused about what these do. And for demonstration purposes, I'm going to take exposure and put it all the way down, just so you could see my brush stroke when I do it. And I'm going to take feathering all the way down, so it's very distinct edge. Now, if I take this brush as is with flow and density at 100, and I just go across the image, you could see there's a very dark line. Well, let's say I take flow down to around 50. And then I go below this one, and I do one stroke left to right just like that across and you can see how that is not as dark as that the thing about flow though is it's cumulative so if i go on top of there and i go again it'll get darker and go again and it will get darker and maybe to better explain i'll bring flow down a considerable amount to 20 and i'll go across so there's 20 once 20 twice 23 times. I'm going kind of crooked as I'm hitting something else on my desk. But, I, but as you can see, I'll just keep going across and I can make it darker and darker and darker. So that's how flow works. You're just going to not let everything out all at once. Just kind of uh, apply whatever adjustment you're doing gradually. Density, on the other hand, really limits the brush. If I take flow at, let's say, 100, but I put density at 50, and I go across. You can see how that's not as dark as that top one. But if I go across it a number of times, it doesn't get any darker. It's just never going to get any darker. Maybe to better explain that, I'll bring density down to 20, and then I'll go left to right. There's that 20. Now I'll go across this a number of times. You can see it's not getting any darker. So density really limits the brush output totally. So that's a way you could better apply the brush uh, to your specific image the way you want it applied. Now I'm going to reset this 
To the right of where it says brush, there's a real little reset button. We'll click there and we'll get rid of all those adjustments. Now, for this specific image, perhaps I'd like to do, um, maybe make the sail a little more colorful. So I'm going to add more feathering and I'll have density and flow all the way up. And then I'll uh, reset exposure by double clicking right on the slider. And I want to go to saturation. I'll turn saturation way up so you can see what I'm doing. Well, I'll get a brush that fits the size, and I have an Apple Magic Mouse, so I'm just going to drag my finger on the edge of the top of the mouse. And I'll come in here, and I'll make this more colorful. Maybe just so you could better see it, too. Um, I'll come in here, and I'll bring exposure down, just so you could better see. Okay, now you can see, as I'm applying it, I am making this sail a little darker and a little more colorful, but you can see I'm spilling over on the edge here. That's where this auto mask may help. If you take auto mask and you click it, whenever you're applying a brush stroke, wherever you first click your mouse button to apply the stroke, it's going to look at the pixels under the brush and try to uh, constrain the brush to that edge. So you can see now it's not going over and hitting the blue as much. It's staying on the sail. So that's where Auto Mask hopefully will help you better apply the brush stroke where you want it and leave it off where you don't want it. Now, I'm going to delete this. I'm just going to hit the Delete key. And I'll better show you maybe at the top. So I'll get a smaller brush. I'm going to click here. And I'm going to try to stay along the edge best I can. But you can see how it seems to work better that way. It's not spilling over into the blue sky. Now, if you do spill over into the blue sky, there's an erase icon right here next to the brush. Click on that, and you could come in here and erase your brush stroke. Like that. Now, we'll go back to the brush. So, we're on our same brush. If we wanted to add a second brush, you could click plus, and you'll add a second brush. Like that, if you wanted to. I'm not saying you do, but if you did, you could add the second brush stroke there. Now, if you want to toggle between the brush and the eraser, instead of coming over here and clicking between the two icons, you could hold the Alt or Option key in. Alt if you have a PC option, if you have a mouse. And you'll, if you're in brush mode, you'll toggle off the brush and toggle on the eraser. And you could come in and then erase very quickly. So it, it saves you time, basically, to just hit that key instead of coming over here. And switching that way. Now, if you're on the eraser and you want to switch to the brush, hold the Alt or Option key and you'll swi switch to the brush. So it just toggles between the two when you hold in that Alt and or Option key. So you can see there's a lot of different attributes we could adjust with the brush. Um, exposure, contrast, highlights, whites, blacks, clarity, and so on. All these different things. Also, at the very bottom, you could actually paint in color. If you click on this little rectangle, you'll get a color picker. And let's, you could just click on here and pick a color. Let's pick a color that's going to contrast a, a great deal with the sky. I'm going to reset saturation. I'm going to turn exposure down so you can better see. And you can see that I'm painting there with color. Hopefully you could see that. Probably didn't pick a great color that contrast. There we go. Maybe a little better there. Now, the last thing I want to show, oh, and if you want to get rid of this uh, box, just then click on this little rectangle again, and it will turn that off. You could also just toggle it on and off with that little switch there. All right, so we're going to get rid of that. So you could paint in color if you want. The last little trick I want to show you with the brush is that you could use the brush by, and paint in a perfectly straight line if you want. I'll bring feathering down again for this one. So if you want to paint a perfectly straight brush stroke. Click on the one side where you want to begin your brush stroke once. Go to the opposite end where you want the brush stroke to terminate and hold in the shift key and then click a second time and you'll paint a perfectly straight line. So there's some tricks on using the brush. In this specific image, I don't think there's really a, a need for the brush. Maybe, maybe there is. Let's see. Um, why don't we warm up the sand a little bit. So I'm going to turn the temperature slider, push it more to the right, and bring the 
tint slider just slightly to the left. So we're going to warm up this sand. I'm going to get a bigger brush and I'm going to feather it pretty heavily. And I'll come in here and warm up the sand. And I'm going to put on auto mask, see if that helps me try to not get it on the boat in water as much. Okay, so we warmed up the sand. So there's our brush. And again, I could add a second stroke if I'd like by hitting that plus sign. So we're done with the brush. Below this is the linear gradient. This is equivalent to the days of filters on when we used film cameras and we'd use a gradient filter on our lens to most often either darken a sky that's bright or colorize a sky like a sunset. You'd use a tobacco filter that's gradient, a gradient tobacco filter to get, add color to the sky. Well, Days of digital photography, those filters aren't used much anymore because we could do it in post-production with the linear gradient. So we're going to reset. Now, one thing I should warn you, you could see that in with our brush, I turned the temperature slider to plus 14 and the tint slider to minus 8. And those adjustments carried over into the linear gradient. So be aware of that, and you will probably want to reset this. To make sure that you're not uh, adding adjustment you don't want to add to your image. Now, again, I mentioned usually you're doing this to darken a sky. So let's just say I want to darken the sky. Um, so I'm going to pull the exposure slider way down just so you could see what I'm doing. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to click once with the left mouse button and hold that mouse button in and drag down. And you could see that it's a gradient. So we're very dark up here and it starts to get lighter as it's coming through this uh, first line to the second line or top line to the middle line. Then it's getting much uh, less applied as we go from the middle line to the bottom line. So you could see how that is a gradient. And once you have it laid down, you could move it around by just grabbing that middle button. You also could tilt it by just coming off that middle button to the side and you could see your cursor turns into this double curved arrow. So you could tilt it if you'd like. And then you could readjust uh, the uh, top and bottom by just grabbing the actual line you want to move and moving it in or up or down. Now, there's some tricks to using this. Oh, one thing I should add, and I forgot to mention it with the brush, if you hover over the button of the overlay here, you can see that you're getting this kind of red overlay. That's showing you where your adjustment is being applied. You also could hit the O key on your keyboard. And when you hit the O key on your keyboard, you'll toggle through a lot of different overlay settings. So I'll hit the O key once and you'll see down here is show mask overlay. So we're seeing that red. I'll hit O key again. And it's show tool and mask overlay. So that's the same as when I hovered over that middle button. I'll hit the O key again, and it's hiding the overlay totally. So the overlay isn't there. And then we'll hit the O key again. And it's showing the tool overlay. That's the default setting. So we'll leave it at that. And I'm going to get rid of this. I want to show you some more tricks on how to apply this linear gradient. Now, you might have noticed when I was pulling it down, it's tilting. So you don't have to uh, come straight down. If you want to darken a corner, you could come over here to this corner and pull in from the corner like this, something like that. Or if you want to apply, I, I said darken, but you could do any adjustment here, exposure, contrast, anything. To a corner, you could do that. Um, if you'd like to um, do something to the entire image with the gradient tool, there's a little trick involved here. For example, let's say you were in doing global adjustments and you pegged out highlights all the way down and the image was still bright. The bright parts were still too bright, but you, you're already at minus whatever with highlights and you wanted to bring highlights down even more. Well, a little trick is you could go to the gradient tool, go to a corner, any corner, it doesn't matter. I'll go to this top corner so I think maybe you could see it a little better. Or no, I'll come over here because... Now I think of it, I'll probably have this enlarged in post. So I'll come over here to this top left-hand corner. Instead of clicking and dragging down, click and drag out. Maybe you didn't see that. Click, click once with the left mouse button. Instead of dragging to my right, I'm going to drag towards the top left. Now you can see how it's adding it to the 
entire image. So there's a little trick you could do to add a gradient everywhere. So it's really a global adjustment now. It's not a local adjustment. Now, if you want to apply your gradient so it's perfectly straight and not crooked at all, hold in the shift key as you click and drag. Hold the shift key and click and drag, and it will not allow you to tilt it. Now, you may notice also, let me get rid of that. You may notice also that when I click and drag down, I'll hold the shift key while I'm doing this, that the top line of these three lines is staying still and the other two lines are drawing downward. Okay, you may notice that. So this top line is kind of um, permanently sticking where it is. I mean, I could adjust it afterwards, but when I'm dragging it, it's staying there and the other two are the two that are moving. Well, there may be an application where it's easier to make the middle line stay where you want it. That would be something like this, where I have a very well-defined horizon, and I may want that middle line right on this horizon. Well, I want it straight, first of all, so I'm going to hold in the Shift key. But to draw it out from the middle line, hold in the Alt key with it. That's if you have a PC. If you have a... Uh, Mac, hold in the Option key. So I'm going to hold in the Shift and the Option key because I have a Mac, and I'll click right here and drag. Now you can see the middle line is staying still, and the other two lines are being drawn out. Now I'll do it up here more so maybe you could see it better. I'm holding in the Shift and Option key. Again, if you have a PC, it's Shift and Alt. Clicking with the left mouse button, dragging down, now you can see the middle line staying still, and the other two lines are coming out. Now you don't have to hold the shift key in to do that. The I'm only holding the shift key in so it stays horizontal. If I don't hold the shift key in and just hold in that option key or alt key, it still will draw out from the middle, but I'll be able to tilt it. Okay, so I hope that was clear. Now also, I keep drawing down. You could draw these up. So if I wanted to just adjust the beach here, I could hold, uh, click with my left mouse button, I'll hold the shift and option key in and drag up. And you can see how it's an upside down or inverted uh, gradient and it's adjusting just the beach. So there's a lot of different ways you could apply the gradient to your image. Little tricks you could do uh, by holding either the shift key in or the alter option key in and dragging out from the corner to apply it everywhere. Also, you could um, paint with color with the gradient by opening up here and you know, clicking on a color, I don't know, and then dragging down. You don't want exposure necessarily down, but maybe you want contrast. So you could paint with a color, something like that. Now, so you could better see it. I'm going to turn exposure down. You could see to the right of the gradient, there's a little brush and an eraser. Well, maybe you want to apply the gradient but you want to brush a different adjustment into the sail. Well, you could do that all right here. Instead of clicking between these two icons on the far right, I could just go to the brush tool. I have my brush attributes there. They may be hidden. Just remember that. We could, uh, again, auto mask it. I could come in and with the brush tool, maybe, you know, do something different. Uh, again, it's adjusting that. So, uh, but you could adjust in a different adjustment. Or you could erase it with the eraser tool. So you could come in here and erase. So you could erase wherever you don't want, in this case, the gradient. And uh, again, we could auto mask. That should help us. You know, now, if, obviously, this isn't a, an adjustment I'm actually going to do. I'm just doing this uh, so you could better understand how this, these different tools work and interact with one another. Uh, I'm going to hit delete there. I'm going to reset that. So I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to show you on the, the linear gradient. Now the radial gradient, I'll click on that. Now notice here in the linear gradient, I have exposure down and I have contrast up. And those get carried over when we go to the radial gradient. Those are there. So make sure you're aware of that. We're going to reset those. Now, radial gradients kind of like, uh, you know, comes out from a circle. And to do that, Go wherever you want the center of the circle to be. Click with the left mouse button and draw out. And you can see we could make it an oval, egg shape, whatever. Make it so it fits. Maybe in this instance, I want to come around the sail. 
of the boat, the sailboat itself. So I could come out like this. I could reposition it right here. Same rules apply as far as overlay. If I hover over it, you'll get the red to show you where the overlay is. If I hit the um, O key on the keyboard, we'll toggle between all the different overlay views. Also on the radial gradient, uh, if you come in here to these edges, you could resize it either horizontally or vertically. And again, you could grab that middle button and move it around to put it where you'd like it. And then you could do whatever you'd like to do. Now, in this case, let's say I'm going to put exposure down. Well, I don't want the exposure darker here. I want it darker everywhere else. So I could click invert and there's that. Now I could increase feathering and Bring it way out more like this. One tip with the radial gradient, if um, it's not fitting, remember you could come off the image itself, like to get it so it's um, the way you want it, I guess, for lack of a better way to say it. So you could, it doesn't hurt or you're able to come off of the image. So you could um, resize the image uh, to um to get it or resize the gradient so it better fits your image is what i'm trying to say sorry so um again i hover over that there's that um it has the brush tool again all right so you could affect uh the gradient uh with a brush on top of it if you want and we have the erase tool so you could erase it from where you don't want it just making it look horrible, but you can see we have those those tools as well. Uh, we'll get rid of this. I'm going to hit the delete key uh, so we get rid of that radial gradient. Now, some tips on applying this gradient. You'll notice when I uh, click down, I'm going to turn exposure down so you can see it very easily. When I clicked with the left mouse button and dragged out, see it's kind of got this oval or whatever. I could shape it any way I'd like. Well, let's do it like that. If you want to paint or create a perfect circle with your radial gradient, hold the shift key in. When you hold the shift key in and you go out, you'll have a perfect circle. Just like that. Just like the band, a perfect circle. Right? Um, if you'll notice too, when I click down and drag out, where I click down is the center of the radial gradient that's the center right where i clicked there may be a, a time where you want that where you clicked to be a the edge of the gradient don't know why you might like this but maybe you would let's say um if you did you would hold the alter option key in it's the alt if you have pc option if you have mac and when you click down now when you drag you're dragging away from where you clicked so i clicked way up over here and we're dragging it out away from that and the last thing, little trick you could do with this gradient tool is hold the command or control key in. Command it if you have a Mac, control if you have a PC, and just double click. And you'll get a gradient that just perfectly fits your screen, your image, I should say. So it's fitting perfectly on the image. It's just like a quick way to maybe put a vignette on your image if you'd like to. In this case, this image doesn't serve with a center vignette because the sailboat's off center. Maybe I'd move it over there. So that helps you maybe, I don't know, get a, a gradient. Again, hold the command or control key in, double click. It just gets you a perfectly shaped gradient that just fits the parameters of your image. Uh, whatever your size your image happens to be, it will just fit on there perfectly. And again, it has the same exact adjustments as the other local adjustments tool, tools. It also has this little color box, so you could apply a color if you want. Um, so all that is here in the radial gradient tool. So those are the local adjustment tools. I'm going to get rid of that. That are available in Lightroom CC. They, those of you that use Lightroom Classic CC, they work identically uh, in the same shortcuts too. Same keyboard shortcuts, same little tricks on holding in certain keys on your keyboard to apply the overlay a specific way, whether you want it perfectly straight or coming out from the center or you want the uh, linear gradient to draw out from the middle as opposed to the top. All that is the same as Lightroom Classic CC. So 
That's it for the local adjustments. Thank you everyone for watching my video series, Learn Lightroom CC. If you could do me a favor and like and share the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel, I'd really appreciate that as well. Also, in the description below this video will be a link to my website. Come visit my website, onlinephotographytraining.com. There you'll find all kinds of free photography how-to articles and videos. I'll talk to you guys soon.